So this fella here is the eastern or mainland tiger snake. And when Europeans first arrived in Australia, this species killed more people than any other venomous snake in the country. Now today, deaths are pretty few and far between, but before antivenine, as many as 50% of people bitten by tiger snakes died. So today we're gonna to talk about antivenom. How do we make it? What's the history of it? And how many people does it save? So it's generally agreed that the first use of antivenine was done by a French scientist by the name of Albert Calmet in what's today Vietnam to treat Indian cobra bites, a big killer of people in South and Southeast Asia. Calmet was working in Vietnam at the time, uh, immunizing people for uh, smallpox. And he was a well-known immunologist. He was one of the co-creators of the tuberculosis vaccine. And when he saw how many people were dying of snake bite, he turned his uh, understanding of antibodies and how the body's immune system works to create the first antivenine. And the method used hasn't really changed ever since. Now the word antivenine or antivenin is a result of Calmet's French heritage. And of course, all his writings were in French. And venin is literally the French word for venom. Now the World Health Organization prefers to use the words anti-venom just because of ease of use, everybody understands it. But myself and a lot of reptile keepers, largely out of habit, still use the word antivenine, but they both mean exactly the same thing. So to make antivenine, the first step is of course, is to collect venom. And in the case of snakes, they are milked into jars. So they're made to bite a jar with a thin membrane over the top, that venom is collected. And this process is repeated hundreds and hundreds of times until they have enough venom to make antivenine. Now that venom is then injected into a host now, this host depends on what species the antivenine is going to be used for. Here in Australia, uh, we use rabbits for funnel web spider antivenine. We use sheep for box jellyfish antivenine. But horses are used for all of our snake antivenines and most antivenines around the world. The benefits of horses is they're a large enough animal that we can inject this venom into them without them becoming overly ill. And of course, being domesticated, they're relatively easy to handle. They don't stress out the situations and things like this. So horses are generally the most common animal used in antivenine production. So the way the process works is this venom is taken from the snake or, or whatever species we're talking about. It's then freeze dried, concentrated and purified and injected into the host subject in slowly increasing amounts. So it's a non-lethal dose, but just enough to create an immune response where the animal starts to slowly build uh, an immunity to, to the toxin. Now then the animal then has to have its blood collected to collect the antibodies that will help neutralize the venom. So in the case of a horse, about 10 to 12 liters of blood is collected. Now, the blood is passed through an apheresis machine, so the red blood cells are put back into the horse, and it's only the plasma, which has the antibodies in it, that we actually need to use to make antivenine. Now, this method of antivenine production hasn't changed since about the 1800s, with the exception of a few additions, such as purifying the venom, and being able to return the red blood cells to the horse. We've gotten gentler at it, but the actual way that we do it has been around for a long time, and it's absolutely life-saving science. Today, the World Health Organization estimates that 5.4 million people around the world are bitten by snakes every year, and between 81,000 and about 140,000 people a year die. Without this antivenine, we could be facing millions of snake bite deaths a year. So this method works really well. It does, however, have a couple of major downfalls. The first one is being a horse byproduct or a byproduct from any other animal, there's a chance of an allergic reaction. Now this can be managed in a hospital situation, but it's why we as farmers or snake catchers can't keep antivenine on us. The other issue and a bigger issue is when the animal creates uh, antibodies to help defend itself against the venom, it will be species specific or at least family specific. So here in Australia, if you're bitten by a tiger snake, you can't be given brown snake antivenine. It's not going to help you. Now to get around this, there's a few things that we can do. We can use what we call venom detection tests to figure out what family or what type of antivenine you need. But where this can't be done, we've also got what we call polyvalent, which is basically universal antivenine. Now it sounds like a wonder product, but it's basically several different antivenines put together. So here in Australia, our polyvalent is basically tiger snake antivenine, brown snake, death adder, uh, type N and black snake, all put together. So you're getting treated for all of them. But it's not the same everywhere else. In India, their polyvalent treats the big four. So the Indian cobra, the common crate, the Russell's viper and the sore scarred viper. 
and there's other polyvalents for other parts of the world. Now these polyvalents are absolutely life-saving where people can't identify the snake or give a specific antivenine, but you need much larger doses of them. That being said, a large dose of our polyvalent is certainly a hell of a lot better than dying in a hospital bed. So at the end of the day, as amazing as this process is, it's pretty simple stuff. It's essentially the same sort of science that applies to how we make vaccines, creating a response where the body makes antibodies. Just rather than doing it in ourselves, we do it in another animal and take the antibodies from there. And thankfully it saves lots and lots of people around the world. And I hope you found this interesting. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like our videos or, or like us on Facebook. And if you wanna support our videos uh, coming out more regularly, help us visit more facilities and show you more animals, support us on Patreon. Support of our Patreon supporters who uh, help us visit other collections and show you animals that I couldn't keep here at home and uh, helps keep the ball rolling here at Wicked Wildlife HQ. Other than that, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, between now and then, I will see you next week. Be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.